7 and All, and today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of my little homeschool space, a bookshelf tour, just to see how I have things set up and organized so that we can effectively homeschool and I can find what I need throughout the day. I will forewarn you in advance, I am an organized person, but I'm not like a fancy organized person. So you are going to see things like cardboard boxes, recycled cardboard boxes for organizing containers and not necessarily coordinated, beautifully labeled containers for supplies and games, etc. So just with that forewarning in place, from this, I want to encourage you, however you organize and however you set up, do it in your own style. If coordination, color coordination, having pretty containers matters to you, by all means do it. If it doesn't matter, but you're kind of feeling like, I think I need that because other people have it, but it genuinely doesn't really matter to you, don't necessarily feel pressured to organize the way that fits another person's personality. Think of who you are when you're setting up your organizational system. Okay, so I'll try to have some tips about that and about knowing yourself throughout the video. Let's get started. So this is my homeschool space, which will be familiar to you if you've seen any of my Day in the Life videos. It is in the corner of my kitchen, so you can see my little countertop oven right here and appliances and apples. <laughs> um, but this is my space and yes, I do have the rolling cart and I do have the Calyx bookshelf. But I do want to note, I actually had the rolling cart and the Ikea bookshelf since before I was a homeschooler and I had the bookshelf since before I was a parent. So this is just my personality, <laughs> not, not simply the homeschool trends. So I do have some of our most used daily supplies right in here. So I, have, I don't have it super full right now. I'm, as I'm adding my preschooler more fully into our school routine, I think I'll be pulling some more things out to have more accessible here. But I have our Matthew C blocks. This is a box of crayons, a significant portion of which are broken. Then this is our box of like erasers, glue, scissors, stapler, like the things that are constantly being needed. I have these two boxes which will pull out and come onto the table every day. Then here are also all the frequently used things, pencils, colored pencils, paint brushes. We've got watercolor easily available here and my pencil box is falling open. And then this is, in an ideal sense, these are the boys' daily workbooks for the most part. Not everything quite fits here, but roughly this is for my older son, and this will be for my younger son. He doesn't have much at the moment because we're kind of winding down what he has been doing and gearing up to start with Gentle and Classical Preschool soon. And we have our math work here. So this is the work that tends to come out day by day. And then over here is my great treasure trove. As I said, I've had that bookshelf for a long, long time, but it has taken many different um, arrangements and iterations over the years. And then this was a new bookshelf to us um, this year. It was a hand-me-down from some friends who left and we really miss our friends, but I think of them every time I look at my nice bookshelf. There's lots of space for everything. So I can kind of walk you through the organization systems. The most important thing, your organization system doesn't have to make sense to someone else. It just has to make sense to you. It has to be something that you can remember, that you can quickly know where to grab every book that you need. Because our table where we do schoolwork is so close out of necessity to our bookshelves, um, I don't necessarily need to gather everything I need for a day into one place. I grab them from the different shelves. So um, I like having it super close, um, but not all houses are going to be arranged for that to make sense. But I just want to <laughs> point out, because as I'm going through this, you might be like, I don't understand this organization system. It's like, that's okay. What you need to think about is what would be an organization system that you would understand. The way I tend to like organizing my shelves is by curriculum because I use a lot of literature based curriculums and for me what makes the most sense in my brain is to put all the books that go with one curriculum in one spot so that when I know oh I need a book for sunlight I go straight to the sunlight shelf if I need a book for our beautiful mundo Spanish I go to that shelf so I'll kind of quickly walk through my system right here 
This is my shelf for Gentoo and Classical Primer and Nature books, and we are winding down with Gentoo and Classical Primer, so I'm probably going to be switching out this shelf soon, putting some of those books away for later. Here's our Sunlight T, Sunlight P there. This is an extremely important drawer. This is my drawer full of random stuff for art supplies craft projects. This is like the masking tape, um, index cards, uh, toilet roll, paper tubes, any kind of random piece of something, a glue dots, whatever it is. This is my drawer of treasures to hopefully make it happen. I don't have a huge amount of supplies, but what supplies I have, as far as random craft supplies, they are in there. This is my, this is my shelf that's mostly just for me. It's my notebooks or the notebooks that I keep for my son to do his narration notebooking in. I've got my planner that's coming out every day here. And then this is a birthday present for my sister. So hopefully she doesn't watch this video. <laughs> uh, then here we have our math and reading shelf. So we've got our kindergarten math, our all about reading, as well as extra readers that I have ready for whenever I just want to pull in extra readers. This shelf is for our library books. But as you can see, we have no library books right now. <laughs> this week, I sent my, um, the way we get library books is through the library at my husband's workplace. And I sent him in with a list and they had none of the books on my list. So we have no library books. <laughs> This is a shelf. This is mainly my pic Spanish picture book collection. Not, it's, this isn't 100% Spanish books. There's a few um, English books on here, but these are just random books. The boys often want to add a book to our morning time reading, and this is the shelf that they typically pick from of easy, quick reads, random picture books to add into our morning. Down here, I have my beautiful Mundo. Um, Spanish book collection and this is mainly our ocean science resources although I also keep the whole Kate Mesner collection right here just out of convenience and so the main thing is I remember what shelf each kind of book goes on which makes it very easy for me to find them the worst thing that can happen with this system is putting a book on the wrong shelf this works for me and Hopefully as my kids get older, they will just know the system after a while because it's very, very important to always put the book back on the correct shelf. It has happened before actually with this book. This little Toro es Cancion, this little book, I lost it for weeks because it got put on the wrong shelf. And I had to go through all the other shelves to find it. But as long as you put each book on the correct shelf, it's pretty easy to find. Down here is my book collection for uh, around the world with um, beautiful feet, beautiful feats around the world with picture books. Part one and two is these three shelves. That is kind of some random supplies, workbooks for the future, or just like painting activity books. I have a little collection of those. And then on this shelf, the um, shelves are a lot shorter, so they can't handle the big picture books. So that's why most of them. My things that require big books, tall books, picture books are on the Calyx bookshelf. With these narrower bookshelves, I had to think more carefully of what would fit here. So we have a lot of our games. You can see my super fancy organization style for our donut game. <laughs> Repurposed boxes. These are our animal figurines collection. This is our Play-Doh collection. So again, I know what these are. My boys know what these are at this point. So as long as everything stays in the same place, stays in the same box, we know what to grab, what we want when we need it. I keep our board books across this section because it is tall enough for board books. Our devotionals and Bibles and then some chapter books or books that I'm reading. And these shelves, you can kind of tell, are not very convenient to get to. So I put books that I'm not really getting into right now down here, which so we have um, chapter books that we're not ready for yet over there. Um, this entire shelf is for first grade, so we're not using that at all right now. Those are science books and our kindergarten science that we're not ready to start yet. So some of these things that are down here and hard to get to, once we will be starting using these and not using a, sh a curriculum on this shelf anymore, I'll switch. So does that make sense to just kind of switch to shelves that are 
a little bit easier to grab from, pull from, and keep the less accessible down on the floor shelves um, for books you're not currently using regularly. Over here, I have my math shelf. So that's where I keep all my math picture books, my math supply box, this green box. I'll show it to you. This is a, don't know if you can read that, but it's a Kit Kat container. <laughs> um, do, do your grocery stores do this, that every once in a while there's like random promotional things where you get plastic Tupperware containers with um, food that you buy? We end up with those at times, <laughs> so they end up use, being used as organizational containers. That was for our pattern blocks. So this is our math shelf. Then we just have different things right here. This is an empty Kleenex box that is being saved for a craft because I know I'm gonna need an empty Kleenex box for an upcoming craft in Gentle and Classical Preschool. And up here we also have things, some things that are not currently being used, like All About Reading Level 2. That will be for our kindergarten science. We've got some coral. And then it's pretty easy for me to just pull these down for our All About Reading lessons, the letter tiles and the letter cards. Here's where I keep Gentle and Classical Preschool materials right now, but I will be pulling them onto the main shelf, the more accessible shelf, once we actually start using it. And then here is kind of my spare uh, art supplies or the art supplies that I don't want so accessible for my kids, like the crayons, I mean, sorry, markers, the small markers, big markers, or just new boxes of crayons that I have in a stash for when I feel like our current crayons have finally been worn down to nubs and it will be nice to open a new box. I keep those up here so that they, we're not starting all the new boxes at once. Then usually some little toys end up on display up here and because of our current ocean studies, we have all of our little ocean creature toys as well as shells that we found up here as well as a box of sand from the beach. And then this is my last little part of my organization. I think this was right here in my last video and now it's been like a year or two later and I still have not found a way to actually hang it up, but I really should. I made this more than 10 years ago and I want to find a bulletin board that's the right size for it sometime to make it into a pin, pin board, like a travel map. That's what I used it for originally, but I couldn't bring the board when we moved. Um, but maybe one of these days I will find that. In the meantime, at least it hasn't been ruined sitting out here yet. Then in this drawer, I keep um, like scrap paper things that have been printed but have a blank back for the kids. If you have kids and if you're homeschooling, scrap paper is an absolute necessity. Um, and there's more like painting supplies. And then we have a couple of games or um, flashcard sets in here, bulky things that just need a home, alphabet flashcards, a dominoes game, things like that. And of course we have our dolphin school. I don't think I mentioned that but an essential part of the homeschool collection right here. All right, so that's our very functional, organized. It is easy, it keeps things easy to find for me. It's not necessarily going to be super fancy and Instagrammable, um, but it's a very happy space where we spend a lot of our time right here at the table enjoying good books. All right, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to 7 and All for more homeschool videos like this one. See you next time. Bye.